What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Dealers Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for another walk around and maybe even a test drive or two. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. Well, it looks like we're gonna start with a couple, maybe three, four Ford Fusions. Good Lord, how many of these could there be? Wow, uh, 2019 Ford Fusion with 79,000 miles on the odometer. Then we've got a 2019 Ford Fusion with 107,000 miles on the odometer. Then we've got a 2020 Ford Fusion with 20,000 miles, or 93, wow, 93,000 miles on the odometer. We've got a 2018 Ford Fusion with 84,000 miles on the, on the uh, that, that, that's all folks, on the odometer. I'm not here to look at Ford Fusion, guys. Uh, I'm actually over here because I saw this GTI sitting in the distance and I thought, huh. You know, this is one of those cars that I've always wanted and I just, for whatever reason, I never got around to buying one. This is a 2022, and it's only got 8,966 miles on the odometer. This car should be like new. I mean, the body looks good, although very, very dirty. Uh, it looks like it's been sitting somewhere for a long time. It makes me wonder if this is some kind of a repossession. I don't know. Why would you have... A 2022 with only 8,000 miles on the odometer. That's, that's kind of bizarre. It should still be riding on the factory tires and everything. Let's take a look at the interior. See what it looks like on the inside. It's actually pretty nice. I like the red on the front seats. Just a little bit here and there. Red piping. Red stitching. Yeah, this is, this is a very clean car. Oh, I, I, I love this. What is this thing worth? I've always, I've always wanted one. This could be a good opportunity to get one at a pretty decent price, guys. There's your six-speed manual transmission the way it should be. Let's go ahead and fire this up. Wow, these screens are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful digital screens. Parking brake works. I don't see any warning lights on the dash other than a TPMS light. Uh, left front tire. We'll go out there and just take a quick look at it. Not really surprised. Guys, it's cold. And it's just getting colder and colder in Oklahoma. So uh, tire pressures are definitely starting to be affected. Give it a little rev. It even shows the boost pressure in the center of your tack on the left side of your screen there. <laughs> oh wow. This is this is a pretty this is a pretty nice car. I'm going to need to adjust this uh this tilt though. Somebody's got it pulled way out. There we go. That's that's better. I'm going to pop the hood. I have no doubt that everything in this car works and this car should still be under warranty. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. I don't know what the warranty is on these, but it should definitely be more than one year and 9,000 miles. Kind of got me wondering, is there supposed to be an engine cover on this? Or is this one of those uh, supply chain shortage issues? You know what I'm talking about? For, it's like, eh, we can't, we don't have any engine covers right now, so we're just selling it without it. That's a little concerning that it doesn't have the cover. But, but again, there really, truly was a supply chain shortage for a lot of vehicles. Hell, it may still be one. And engine covers are one of those things that people were just like, nah, send it without it. I mean, it sounds healthy, guys. I don't, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. I think you open the hatch by, yeah, pushing on the Volkswagen emblem. Guys, this is like a brand new car. This is like a brand new car. You know we gotta take this for a ride. I've always wanted to drive one of these. I'm gonna pull up the Black Book Cherry on this to try to get an idea of what this thing would cost. This is one that I would buy. I'd play with it for a while and I'd probably just send it right back down the road. All right guys, well, let's take it for a quick test drive. We're parked right next to a Dodge Charger next to all of these fleet vehicles. So shouldn't be too hard to remember where we got it from. I looked up the Black Book Cherry on this. This is this is definitely more than I would be wanting to spend. But if I could get it for just a little bit under 
wholesale basically wholesale on this is 30 grand uh i've i've got the money for it it's not that i don't have the money i have it but like that's the majority of what i got left to spend and spending it all on one car is uh, i don't know something that i'm going to use for a little bit and then send down the road um yeah that's tough <laughs> that's a tough decision and then i have to wonder Am I going to be able to make any money on it? Or is this something that I'm going to end up... I don't know what this guy's doing, man. He seems to be having some technical difficulties here. I mean, there's a giant parking spot. He can't seem to figure out how to park that truck. Um, yeah, you know, if I lose a little bit of money, I'm not going to be too upset about it. But number one, it's a Volkswagen. So I think it's going to hold its value pretty well. You know, it's already two model years old. I know it's a 22 and it is 2023, but in September, the next model year comes out. So technically, this car is two model years old. It's got no miles on the odometer, which means I should be able to drive this thing, put some miles on it. It shouldn't really hurt things too awful much. Now I'm trying to film and steer and shift, so bear with me. Um, I've never driven one of these before. This is my first time. I'm really wanting to see, you know, how does it handle? How does it feel driving down the road? So far, honestly, it, it's it's very comfortable <laughs> considering that it's a a little bitty subcompact car. Can I get through here? I don't know. People are honking and this. I don't know, man. It can be kind of a a nightmare to get through here. Let's just get this thing up to the... What is everybody honking for, man? Okay, well, I just want to get to the test track, man. I just want to test out this car, make sure everything is good with it. It should be, but it's still... When you're talking about $30,000, uh, you might want to make sure, you know, make absolutely sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be before you go dropping money on it. I'm hopeful that maybe this one would go for like 28. If it went for 28, I'd be confident that I could buy it, drive it, and probably still make some money when I'm done with it. You have a heads-up display. You guys probably can't see it, but it's right there. We do have a heads-up display. I'm going to I'm going to kind of get on it and we'll just we'll just see what happens. All right, here we go. I'm not going to smash on it too much or anything, but Eighteen pounds of boost, thirty pounds. Wow, no way. We're already up to sixty in third gear. That was, I mean, and that was easy. Like that was, that was really easy to get up to sixty in third gear without smashing on it at all. Surely that PSI cannot be the boost. It, it can't be. It can't be. Um, I'm gonna put you guys down there so you guys can see it. But I'm, I'm having a hard time accepting that this thing has 30 PSI a boost. I, I guess I could be wrong. Ready? Let's go. Thirty PSI a boost. Really? Uh Okay, I, I, I guess that is the case. I, I, that, that really, that surprised me. I'm gonna have to look up what the horsepower and torque numbers are on this and the zero to 60. I'm pleasantly surprised at how quick this little car is. It really gets up and goes. It's definitely got some power. Um, very respectable torque. It felt really nice. It drives perfect as I expected. Brakes slowing down felt good. The steering felt good as well. Air conditioning is ice cold. So there's uh, nothing that I can see wrong with this car, guys. I'm going to put it back where we got it from. And I'm going to put this one on my list. This is one that if I could get it for under 30, that's the trick. I want it for, even if it's 29, I want it for under 30. <laughs> If I can get it for under 30, this is one that I'd seriously consider. If it goes over 30, I'm out. All right, let's come over here and see what they got. We're getting closer to the uh, to the repossession side, probably about three or four rows away. Uh, this little WRX, this has been sitting here forever. We actually looked at this before, and I can't remember why we walked away from it. 
but I definitely remember <laughs> we walked away from it. Uh, and the stickers are removed, so it looks like that one may not be for sale. This one either. This is a Chrysler Capital. We're already into repos. No way. Yeah, looks like occasionally they got repossessions mixed in here with some of these, so we'll keep our eyes open. I really like looking at the repos. A lot of them are in pretty rough shape, but you've got a better chance. If you want to get something for cheap, you have a much better chance of getting a repo for cheap than you do any of these other cars, especially things like rental cars or other dealerships that are trying to move their cars. You know, uh, a lot of times these dealers have too much into them and they're still wanting top dollar. And that's, you know, that's just not, that's not realistic right now, guys. And a lot of times they won't let go of them. Now, when it comes to repos, it's a mixed bag, man. Some of these banks think that they're gonna get top dollar for them and they're never going to, and they'll just hold them and run them over and over and over and over again. Um, other times, the banks are just like, cut them loose. You know, just, just get rid of it, let it go, and you know, move on. Because at the end of the day, they're going to take the loss and they are going to sue the person that defaulted on the loan for the difference. And you know, they'll probably never get their money, but that's how it works. So, you know, I like the repos because I feel like I've got a better chance with a repo of actually walking away with something than I do uh, most of the other cars sitting out here. So repos are my favorite. They're just interesting, but you know, like I said, they're a mixed bag, not just with the finance companies that are that hold the loans, but also the cars themselves can be, you know, <laughs> some of them can be really, really nice. And some of them, you know, some of them not so much. So it's definitely something you gotta pay attention to when you're looking at the repos. Really pay attention to these cars. Look them over before the auction. Don't come out here and just start bidding. Um, look at this. What? It, yes, it has keys. Well, that's that's good. Keys help. Keys help. So, um, well, they put a new door on it, so that's nice. What's not nice is the the rest of it um, in that gap. I think that that gap is not factory, guys. That gap is not factory. Wow, that actually the door actually works. Oh, well, ooh, boy, the smell in there. Good, good Lord. I'm gonna say this car is no longer structurally sound and uh, definitely not safe for public use. I don't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is, uh, this is really bad. This is, this is really bad. It's obviously been sitting for, uh, you know, six years, is my guess. Poor, uh, poor Hyundai. Um, I actually came over here to look at, to look at this, but then I saw that and I was like, uh, I, I, you just never know, you know, <laughs> that's all I can say. I saw this Navigator L over here and I was like, man, that's kind of, that's kind of slick. I kind of like it. It's got the black and the chrome. It's a 2008. It's a little bit older. It's got 114,000 miles on it. And I can't help but wonder, is this a repossession? Or is this just being sold through a dealership? It's got Michelin tires with good tread. A few dings and dents and scrapes. But I mean, overall, overall, this is, this is actually pretty daggum nice. Let me take a look. It is from, it's a repo. Yep, yep. It is a repo. It's a little bit older, but you know what that means? That doesn't mean I don't want it. That actually means I have a better chance of being able to afford it. Um, I hate that kind of seating system. You know, the, the, the deal where you gotta fold and, and pull and, and flip seats so that your passengers can get in the back. If you've gotta do that, in my opinion, those back seats are, are relatively useless. Um, oh wow, that didn't sound good, did it? I don't know. It, it, to me, that's just a, it's an old school way of doing things. I mean, I do like it though. You got the brown piping on the seats. I mean, nice, supple, soft leather, soft touch everywhere. Lincoln, man. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, THX certified. Um, 
we could turn this down heated and cooled seats very nice you just don't know what to expect from a 2008 you never know what you're going to get look at those old school gauges kind of reminds me of their uh, lincoln town cars from way back in the day those needles and the gauges the uh the font and everything the chrome in there i really like it it feels like it might be running a tad bit rough maybe and i think this has got a god 2008 this is what a three valve triton we're gonna pop the hood real quick take a quick peek important window uh oh yes there we go whoo important window works less important window works and that's all that matters that's all we're gonna worry about right now um make sure the ac is on i'm not feeling any air conditioning coming out of this how do we turn it on lord have mercy there we go that's what i need we'll let that run for a minute see what it does it says oil change is required 114,000 on the clock pop the hood yeah this isn't too bad guys it does feel like it's it's idling a little bit rough but i mean it does have a hundred thousand miles on the odometer so it could have something to do with that too um well there's the engine what is it i don't know i'm just assuming that is a three valve triton uh doubt that that's going to be a 4.6 i think that's going to be a 5.4 we'll take a look over here though let's see what it says blah blah 5.4 liter triton Ugh. i'm kidding i mean it's not that they're bad motors it's just they're kind of notorious for having a lot of problems you know what i mean they're not bad motors they just you know they're just known for having a lot of problems that's all they've got a they got a bad reputation is what I, is what i'm trying to say there we go oh nice backup camera look at that that's teeny tiny like what what am i supposed to do with this is where i'm sitting i can barely see anything on that camera at all especially when the glare gets into it like that like okay well I'm not going to drive this. I don't know. The, the, you know, it's got no warning lights on the dash. Um, the air conditioning does work. It's got nice cold air. The windows work. Steering feels good. The windshield is chipped. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Probably not. But it's got a, it's got a chipped windshield. It's, 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 it's all right. This is a road trip vehicle is what this is all day long all day long like th this is nice i'm gonna put it on my list because i got a feeling something like this is not gonna go for a whole lot of money guys it's older got some miles on her this is and it's a repo so this is one i think we might actually be able to get for a pretty good deal it looks good you give this thing a, a wash and maybe a buff and a polish yeah man yeah this thing would be slick how about a nissan titan no, I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> it's not a Titan. Old school hard body Nissan. You guys remember these? This one's pretty rough. Got a lot of scrapes and scratches. It's dinged up pretty good. This is somebody's work truck. There's not a straight panel on this. There's not a panel that doesn't have scrapes, scratches, dings, and dents all over it. Still, it'd be a fun mud toy, though. Uh, four wheel drive, manual transmission. You got that old school Nissan ding. You guys remember that. What's it got? 166,000 miles, 170,000 miles on the odometer. Smells like somebody died and then puked and then regurgitated the puke and died again. So it's uh, what I'm trying to tell you is it, it smells about as awful as you could possibly imagine. Uh, yeah, that's it's 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 really bad. It smells really bad. Um, this is from it says it's from a fleet lease company. So I don't know about that, guys. Uh, I think the lease expired on this one a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it's this was. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, this is pretty rough. Boy, it stinks. That's, that's all I can say about it is it, it just smells really bad. Oh, what the hell though. Let's see what it does. Maybe we can get it to fire up. Maybe. It looks like somebody busted out the ignition or something. At some point, somebody got in here and really kind of made a mess of things. Look at that. It's just all, all broken. There's your gauges. 170,000 on the clock. 
five speed manual with some old school four by four right here. Look at this, remember this? Yeah. Oh. Well, I guess that's that. It's dead as doornail. Let's pop the hood. See what uh see what she's working with. We got things falling out. I don't know. It'd be fun as a toy. It's about all it'd be any good for though. Boy, you're gonna get run over out here. Well, nice little V6. Pretty big motor for such a small truck. Timing belt motor, I think. Yeah, it's a timing belt motor. Yeah, unless you're looking for uh, for just a mud toy, that's about all this one would be any good for, guys. She's she's been beat beat on pretty hard. Road hard, put away wet. Let's continue on. See what else we got. There's a Jeep. Nobody ever watches the Jeeps. There's a Charger RT in purple. I actually love that color. I don't care what anybody says. I love that color. A Buick? No. An F2 Nifty? I do kind of like that. We don't look at trucks all that much anymore since, I mean, I got my truck and kind of really haven't had any reason to be looking at anything else. These things are parked in here pretty tight too, so you got to be careful. I don't want to ding or scratch up anything. I think that's about it for this row. What do we got over here? A Volkswagen? Yeah, our line. What is our line? That must be like the super sporty version, right? Yeah, no, I don't know. Let's take a peek. This is uh, <laughs> it's a repo. Yep, yep. A repo. It's got how many miles is it? 63,000 miles on the odometer. This is a 2019. And I tell you, every time we come out here, guys, just a lot of repos, man. A lot of repos. This was actually pretty clean though. This is this is decent. Uh, not looking for whatever this is. A Tiguan, a Tiguan SEL four motion all wheel drive. There's a Telluride next to it. So we're probably getting well into the. Ooh, I like this. Probably getting well into the repos by now. This is an ES350. This is no. This is from a dealer. This is not a repo. Ooh, <laughs> it could be a repo. Yeah, somebody shot the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> shooting at him while he's driving off with it I guess all right guys let's uh let's walk over here see what else we can find I see an Escalade over there there's a Tahoe that's hail damage lots of hail damage on that uh, f550 no thank you 350 450 what is this oh this is what I need a Fuso Fuso? Fu Fuso? Fuso? I, I don't know what that is. You guys, you guys have to tell me. I've never heard of it before. An FE 145 2010 with 109,000 miles on the odometer. Nope. Nope. That's, that's not what I need. We're, uh, we're getting into some slim pickings over here, guys. There ain't much left. This purple Jeep from Santander. I swear I've seen this before. Yeah. I have seen this before. This thing is still here? Man, this was like weeks ago. That was weeks ago we saw that. There's a cute little uh, Fiat 500, little Honda, Infiniti, and a, a V6 Charger with a big wing on the back. Another Cadillac, I think that's like an XT4. Tacoma. Not really seeing much that I'm all that interested. I mean, this Tacoma's kind of nice. 2014, 160,000 miles, this a repo. Let's take a quick look at this. No, it's not, auto remarketing. So most likely a, a wholesaler, probably traded into a dealership. Dealership sold it to one of their wholesale guys and the wholesale guy sends it to auction and tries to make a few bucks on it. I don't actually, I actually kind of like this one, guys. <laughs> this, this looks decent. Automatic transmission, interior is really clean. Smell it. Oh, wow. Hell no. Oh my God. Oh, wow. You know that old saying, don't judge a book by its cover? <laughs> Instead, judge a car by its smell. I'm serious. Don't judge a car by how shiny it is. Judge a car by its smell because if it smells like this, if you, oh, 
anything that smells like this, there, somebody, there's something wrong. You know what I mean? Something, that's bad. That's, 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 that is really, really bad. Over here, we're going to get back to this Cadillac. I want to show this to you guys again before we move on to this Mercedes and Volvo sitting over here. But I had a lot of you actually really like this car. You wanted me to buy it. I'll be honest with you. I don't remember why I did not bid on this one. Um, I remember that I love the color. It's got that really pearlescent color. You know, it's silver, but as you can see right there, it kind of turns, well, lots of colors. Green, yellow, gold. I don't know. Lots of colors. It ran great. It drove okay. I seem to remember maybe it had some suspension problems or <sighs> there was something. 100 plus thousand miles. I remember that. North Star engine, which is concerning. 2006, I think. Yeah. And everybody tells me 06 is the year that uh, Cadillac fixed the uh, head bolts pulling out of the engine problem. I, I don't think I believe that. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think I believe that. It's still here, so obviously this thing is uh, going back into the auction. Um, as of the recording of this video, this thing goes up for auction tomorrow. Um, you know, it's a nice car. If I remember right, the AC didn't work in this either. Yeah, you know... There's so many cars out here that we can bid on and we can buy. I just, if this had been in nicer condition, absolutely, all day long. But unfortunately, this one's pretty rough. It looks good and it, it drives okay, but I'm telling you, there is something else going on with this car that just, it made me leery and I decided to steer clear of it. I think this is gonna be the last one on the list, guys. A 2015 Chevy Impala with 120, I'm kidding. I'm joking. You're not looking at an Impala, but how about this Suburban? This is big. This is massive, guys. Man, I really like this. I wonder if this is a uh, if this is a repo. It's a 2016, so I mean it is a little bit older. It's got 130,000 miles, so it's got some miles on it as well. I'll tell you something about these though. Don't let the age or the mileage fool you. These things go for crazy money. People, people pay really good money for these. Uh, this one's got a busted windshield. This is not a repo. This is actually a dealership selling it. It's got decent tires. The back tires look like they probably got 50, 60% tread. It's missing the tow hitch cover. All of them are. That's not a big deal. Yeah, the front tires probably have 30, 40% tread. This thing is scratched up, scraped up. Yeah, these front tires, yeah, the, you know, the tires are going to need replaced relatively soon, probably within the next 10, 15,000 miles, depending on how the alignment is on it. Overall, though, it looks pretty decent. Actually, no, it doesn't. Hold up. I just caught a glimpse of this. I didn't see this a minute ago. You see all these dents in the fender? Look at that. Yeah, you got you to gotta pay attention. You really got to pay attention. Let's take a look at the interior. I mean, pretty dang nice. Decent, for sure. It smells good. Yeah, this one, this one's okay. Let's take a look at the back. See what they got going on back here. See, someone was taking their lunch break, sleeping in the passenger seat. You got your DVD screen for both rows, which is really nice. Third row seating back there looks good. Front and rear heat, air conditioning. The works, man. Look at that nice little cup holder right there. How nice is that? I don't know what you're gonna fit there, but it's an LT. I don't know if it's a one, a two, a three. I have no idea. Let's fire it up, see if we hear any ticking or knocking noises. Nope. That's a good sign, guys. That's a, that's a really, really good sign. Because when you start these things up, if you hear ticking, tapping, knocking noises, watch out because uh, that can be a sign that you got lifters getting ready to die out on you. Taking a look at the instrument cluster here. Looks good. Tire pressure is a little bit low, but like I said, it's it's been relatively cold out, so you can kind of expect the tire pressures to be a little bit low. I love this screen. Sounds like the motor is getting a little weak, but I like that you can, uh, you can hide your things in there, you know? Keep them out of sight, kind of out of mind. So this has got your heated seats, but it does not have cooled seats. So this is definitely not a 3LT. It's probably a 1LT. 
It's got the Bose Premium Audio. It's got navigation, which is nice. The AC is on and it feels decent. You do have a four-wheel drive, which is obviously very nice to have. Automatic headlights. You're gonna have a 5.3 under the hood. I guess we can pop the hood and just take a quick leak. A uh, quick... <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. <laughs> I did... I did not just say that. It's not what I meant. I, w <laughs> I was thinking we can take a quick peek under the hood and check for leaks. That's what I wanted to say. That did not come out right. I'm sorry. No, we are not going to take a leak under the hood. Um, they would... <laughs> They would throw me out. They'd never let me come back again. Um, so there's your there's your 5.3. It's purring like a kitten. I don't see any signs of anything leaking anywhere. No smoking or anything like that. Not even valve cover gaskets. I mean, everything looks pretty good. Look down there, you can see it's very clean. Yeah, everything, everything looks to be in pretty good shape on this. This is, this is a good one. I could take it for a drive, but I'll be honest with you, I don't really, don't really see the reason. I don't think I'm going to bid on this. I don't really have any use for a ginormous Suburban. Um, but if I did, yeah, this is one that I would definitely take for a spin. And as long as it drove, shifted properly, I'd absolutely throw a bid on it. Like I said, though, these things, unfortunately, still bring quite a bit of money. So... For the kind of money I'm looking to spend, this is not what I want to buy. So with that, I'm going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. I would truly appreciate it. And don't forget to drop your comments down below. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.